This is another slide taken from an uh, intestinal tissue. Uh, however, this particular section was taken from uh, calf intestine, prewindling calf intestine that was infected with Cryptosporidium parvum. And uh, what you'll notice is a very different appearing villi from that of Isospora in the sense that the the apical ends don't seem to be vacuolated to the same extent. However, you do oftentimes see villar atrophy. The other thing you'll notice is the, the presence of large numbers of, of uh, lymphocytes pr that are present in the lumen, uh, and these c cells have, have come out from the, the general circulation and are, are in attempting to fight off this particular parasite. Even at this magnification of uh, using the 20x objective, you'll, you can, and even with the, the video system, you should be able to see the fact that the, the surface of the intestinal cells appear rather serrated or, or, or very rough. And this is due to the presence of uh, the cryptosporidium parasite. Using the 100x objective, uh, you can very easily see then the the, pr the presence of this parasite, and it almost looks like the parasite is is stuck to the outside of the cells. And and until they looked at these with electron microscope, they thought that that was the case. Rather, what they found was that the parasite li lives right underneath the the plasma membrane of the the intestinal cell and bulges that membrane out into the lumen. The other thing you should notice is the if you compare these cells to uninfected cells that the the col nice columnar intestinal cells now have been whittled down to almost squamous looking cells. These cells will eventually die off and and um, and the the villi will start to to disappear. Underneath and, and in and amongst uh, the, the connective tissue of the villi, you, you should be able to find red blood cells. And if you focus back and forth on many of these, you can even, you'll even pick up the, f the uh, idea that these are biconcave discs as described in the introductory biology. And you'll f also notice a lot of these, these uh, blood cells, white blood cells, and many of these are on their way to the outside of the, into the lumen as, as over in here uh, in an attempt to fight off the infection. If we were to take a fecal sample from the calf that uh, was infected with the crypto that I showed you previously, and smear that uh, fecal sample out on a on a microscope slide, stain it with an acid fast stain. You would uh, likely see uh, image an image like uh, shown at the end of the pointer, and this is rep will represent the, um, the kind of the typical oocyst from Cryptosporidium. They're so tiny that it's difficult to recognize them in wet mounts. And so they've had to, to resort to staining them with a, a selective stain, such as the acid fast, in order to, to be a little more confident that that's what we're looking at. Sometimes, if you're really lucky, you can see these the, the, the nuclei of the sporozoites. As I focus back and forth, you can see those uh, the, the purple dots that are present. Cryptosporidium has four sporozoites inside the oocyst, but they're, they're like I said, are very very tiny. After you look through this slide, you'll also um, develop a, a, a good idea why there are several companies that are making fluorescent antibodies to uh, more definitively identify this particular parasite in fecal smears.